On Thursday afternoon, Donald Trump held his first solo press conference as president. Trump began by announcing he'd nominated Alexander Acosta to be Labor Secretary nominee, but then Trump soon began an extended attack on the media, accusing CNN and other outlets of peddling fake news. The press conference went on for 77 minutes. Here are some of the excerpts of what happened. The press has become so dishonest that if we don't talk about it, we are doing a tremendous disservice to the American people. Tremendous disservice. We have to talk about it to find out what's going on, because the press, honestly, is out of control. The level of dishonesty is out of control. As you know, our administration inherited many problems across government and across the economy. To be honest, I inherited a mess. It's a mess at home and abroad, a mess. I turn on the TV, open the newspapers, and I see stories of chaos, chaos. Yet it is the exact opposite. This administration is running like a fine-tuned machine, despite the fact that I can't get my cabinet approved. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. President, you said today that you had the biggest electoral margin since Ronald Reagan with 304 or 306 electoral votes. In fact, President Obama got 365 and 282. Well, I'm talking about Republican. The pres yeah. President uh, Obama, 332, yeah. and George H.W. Bush, 426, when he won as president. So why should Americans trust Well, no, I was told, I was given that information. I don't know. I was just given. We had a very, very big margin. I guess my question is why should Americans trust you when you accuse the information they received of being fake when you're providing information that's Well, I don't know. I was given that information. I was given I've actually I've seen that information around. But it was a very substantial victory. Do you agree with that? You're the president. Okay, thank you. I, that's a good answer. What will you do on the leaks you have said twice today? Yes, we're looking at them very very, very serious. I've gone to all of the uh, folks in charge of the various agencies and we're I've actually uh, called the Justice Department to look into the leaks. Those are criminal leaks. On the leaks, is it fake news or are these real leaks? Well, the leaks are real. You're the one that wrote about them and reported them. I mean, the leaks are real. You know what they said. You saw it. And the leaks are absolutely real. The, the news is fake because so much of the news is fake. I can handle a bad story better than anybody as long as it's true. And, you know, over a course of time, I'll make mistakes and you'll write badly, and I'm okay with that. But I'm not okay when it is fake. I mean, I watch CNN. It's so much anger and hatred, and just the hatred. Did you direct Mike Flynn to discuss sanctions with the Russian ambassador? No, I didn't. Prior to your no, I didn't. inauguration? No, I didn't. But and Mike... You fired him excuse me. No, I fired him because of what he said to Mike Pence. Very simple. Mike was doing his job. He was calling countries and his counterparts. So it certainly would have been okay with me if he did it. I would have directed him to do it if I thought he wasn't doing it. I didn't direct him, but I would have directed him because that's his job. You said that the leaks are real, but the news is fake. I guess I don't understand. Uh, it seems that there's a disconnect there. If the information coming from those leaks is real, then how can the stories be the fake? The reporting and, is fake. And if look, I, may ask, look, I just want to ask Jim, you know what it is? Here, here's the thing. The public isn't, you know, they read newspapers, they see television, they watch. They don't know if it's true or false, because they're not involved. I'm involved. I've been involved with this stuff all my life. But I'm involved. So I know when you're telling the truth or when you're not. I just see many, many untruthful things. And I'll tell you what else I see. I see tone. You know the word tone. The tone is such hatred. I'm really not a bad person, by the way. No, but the tone is such... I do get good ratings, you have to admit that. The tone is such hatred. I certainly didn't win by people listening to you people, that's for sure. But I'm having a good time. Tomorrow they will say, Donald Trump rants and raves at the press. I'm not ranting and raving, I'm just telling you. You know, you're dishonest people. But, but, I'm not ranting and raving. I love this, I'm having a good time doing it. But tomorrow the headlines are going to be, Donald Trump rants and I'm not ranting and ranting. The whole Russian thing, that's a ruse. That's a ruse. And by the way, it would be great if we could get along with Russia, just so you understand that. 
that tomorrow you'll say, Donald Trump wants to get along with Russia. This is terrible. It's not terrible. It's good. On the travel ban, uh, would you accept that that was a good example of the smooth running of government? Yeah, I do. I do. Let me tell you about the travel ban. Were there any mistakes in that? Wait, wait. I know who you are. Just wait. Let me tell you about the travel ban. We had a very smooth rollout of the travel ban, but we had a bad court. We've got a bad decision. We had a court that's been overturned. Again, may be wrong, but I think it's 80 percent of the time. A lot. We had a bad decision. We're going to keep going with that decision. We're going to put in a new, uh, a new executive order next week sometime. Can you say whether you are aware that anyone who advised your campaign had contacts with Russia during the course of the election? Well, I told you, General Flynn obviously was dealing, so that's one person, but he was dealing as he should have been. During the election? No, no nobody that I know of. Nobody so you're not aware of any contacts look, during look, the course look. of the election? How many times do I have to answer this question? Can you just say Russia yes no is a it? ruse. Are you a friendly reporter? Watch how friendly he is. Wait, wait, watch how friendly he is. Go ahead. What we are concerned about and what we haven't really uh, heard being addressed is an uptick in anti-Semitism and how the government is planning to take care of it. There's been a report out that 48 uh, uh, bomb threats have been made against Jewish centers all across the country in the last couple of weeks. There are people who are committing anti-Semitic acts or threatening to... You see, he said he's going to ask a very simple, easy question. And it's not. It's an important It's not. Not a, not a simple question. Not a fair question. Okay, sit down. I, I understand the rest of your question. So here's the story, folks. Uh, number one, I am the least anti-Semitic person that you've ever seen in your entire life. Number two, racism, the least racist person. In fact, we did very well relative to other people running as a Republican. Quiet, quiet, quiet. See, he lied about he was going to get up and ask a very straight, simple question. So, you know, it's welcome to the world of the media. Well, when, okay? you, say, when you say the inner cities, are you, going to, are you going to include the CBC, Mr. President, in your conversations with your, your urban agenda, your inner city agenda, as well as... Am the, I going to include Are who? you going to include the Congressional Black Caucus and the Congressional Well, Hispanic I would. Caucus, I tell you what. Do you want to well set up the, the meeting? Do you want to set up the meeting? No, no, no. I'm, are they I'm, friends I'm, of I'm yours? I'm just a reporter. No, get a, set up the I meeting. I know some of them, but I'm sure Let's they're Let's go set up right a now. meeting. Excerpts from President Trump's news conference on Thursday. That last voice was April Ryan, Washington bureau chief for American Urban Radio Networks.